I may be a homeschool mom, but confession time, I am not a science girly. Atoms, protons, neutrons, those make no sense to me. And the periodic table of elements uh, gives me hives. And kingdom, phylum, class, order, genus, all of that kind of stuff uh, will make my eyes glaze over. I'm Ryan, Christ-following wife and stay-at-home mom to four sweet boys. I'm growing and learning how to glorify Christ as a wife, mom, homemaker, and teacher. So come and grow and learn with me. I am Mama on Mission. So when I was in school, I was the definition of overachiever. If there's extra credit, I'm going to do it, even if I have an A in the class. Why? Because I can. And why wouldn't I? <laughs> However, I took the bare minimum when it came to science. So when I graduated, all of my other core subjects, I had more than enough credits to graduate. Science, as soon as I got that bare minimum, I was done. And that may seem kind of weird because if you've been around long, you know that I love to be outside. I love to pick up bugs and catch fish and do all of that kind of stuff. I love nature, I love animals. I just don't like the nitty gritty of science and I never have. Now, that being said, of course, I would give birth to some boys who just love science. And so it does stretch me, but I will say I knew from day one that we started homeschooling that I was gonna have to find a science program that worked for them because they love it, but also worked for a mom who doesn't love it. And I am thankful that when my oldest was just in first grade, I came across Apologia Science. And so far, it has been the only science we've used. We used a different one for kindergarten, but from first grade on, and he is going into seventh grade this year, that is all we've used. And there's a good reason for that. Now, keep in mind, we have not used anything beyond the Young Explorer series. We plan to do that in eighth and ninth grade. So they have a track where you can work through the Young Explorer series between kindergarten and sixth grade, and then seventh and eighth grade, they have a middle school science, and then they have three sciences for high school and then an advanced level for like your senior year of high school. Uh, because my oldest is a little bit young for his age and to keep him with the others a little longer, which I'll explain later, I am prolonging his Young Explorers for one more year. So he's gonna spend seventh grade still in Young Explorers, but then he will do eighth and ninth grade in their middle school and he'll do 10th through 12th in their higher levels for high school. Now, of course, I don't know for sure that we'll stick with Apologia all the way through high school, but if the Young Explorer series is any indication, I anticipate that we will. And just for reference, when it comes to the Young Explorer series, these are the ones we have used so far. Astronomy, Swimming Creatures of the Fifth Day, Land Animals of the Sixth Day, Earth Science, Human Anatomy and Physiology, and Chemistry and Physics. Now, those are not in the order we use them. I can't really remember the order we use them in. Um, the order we use them in was not exactly what I would recommend, but we had to do them differently because we were in a co-op and we had to kind of follow along with them for four of those years, I think. Um, so the ones we haven't done are botany, which we're doing next year, and zoology one, which my oldest son will just not get to do, um, but we do plan on doing that two years from now with my other two sons. Now, for why you're here, here are the five reasons why I love Apologia Science. The first has to be the ease of use. The hardest thing you have to do to plan for a lesson is to look at a supply list. Really not that hard. And you don't even have to go to the different lessons. They have it all in the back for you. You'll see for each week exactly what materials you'll need. So you can look a week ahead. You can look months ahead, however you want to do it. It's there for you at a glance. Now they also give a suggested schedule in the notebooking journal. This is kind of what to read when and what corresponding notebooking pages go with it. So that is for both the junior notebooking journal and the regular version. And so if you just want the lesson plans laid out, you don't wanna to have to do any guessing on what to do when, it's there for you. And I use that every year and it has been amazing. Also to make things easier, if you do not wanna read the whole thing and you don't have a kiddo that is able to read the whole thing aloud or to himself, then you can buy either the CDs or the MP3s. I highly recommend that. I will say the CDs that we got this past time only worked in one of my DVD players. Um, I think they were meant for a computer and I have a Mac and I don't have a disc drive. And so I thankfully had a Blu-ray player that played it, but that was the only place we could play it, which was kind of frustrating. So next year we will definitely be getting the MP3s again and putting them on my phone so that we can take them with us wherever we go. 
and sporadically throughout the chapter they have what do you remember questions and they are in orange in the newer books anyway and the answers are even in the back so if you weren't listening or you just don't know um, the answers are in the back so you don't have to guess at the answers either so literally super easy very well laid out my second favorite thing that i love about apologia is that i can use it with a variety of ages so like i alluded to before we will be using it for three students next year and my kids are not your typical every year and a half to two years apart like a lot of people's are my kids are a little more spaced out i will have a seventh grader a fifth grader and a kindergartner next year but here in this house we love a family subject and it is so easy to adapt this to make it stretch to fit your range of children because even if i wanted to i couldn't fit in three different sciences next year. That's just, there's not enough hours in the day, but there are different journals. There is, like I said, the regular notebooking journal. There is the junior notebooking journal. In the junior notebooking journal, there is print copy work. There is more guided note-taking. Um, in the older version, there is cursive copy work, and there is a little bit more advanced word searches and things like that and a little more open note-taking, kind of take your own notes type stuff. And the text makes it to where it's not too hard for a younger kid to understand, but not so simplistic that a sixth grader would be sitting there yawning and rolling his eyes. And I'll hit more on the text later. But overall, it is super enjoyable. It is very hands-on. There are lots of beautiful pictures to look at all throughout the book. In both editions, I have some of my books that are the older edition, some that are the newer, and they're both great. The third thing I love is how adaptable it is. So because we want to use it with kindergarten through seventh grade in my case, it has to be adaptable, right? But here is why and how it is adaptable. Like I said, there are the junior notebooking journals and the regular notebooking journals. So junior for your kids, kindergarten first, second, maybe third, and then third, fourth, fifth, sixth for those older ones. But it's also adaptable not just for ages, but for our days. So if I am having a day where I just need to do the bare minimum, I don't have time, I don't have patience, I don't have the desire to do much else, I can literally put in the MP3 or the CD and just listen to the lesson, maybe answer the questions and call it a day. Or if I'm feeling spunky and with it, then we can listen to it or I can read it aloud. We can answer the questions. We can do all of the demonstrations and all of the experiments and all of the questions and discussion and the whole shebang and all the notebooking journal stuff, right? I only got through about two thirds of the notebooking journal this year. I did a little bit from each lesson, but we didn't do everything, but you definitely could. Um, you can just adapt it to how you're feeling that day. Sometimes if we're just not feeling the experiment part, we can look on YouTube for something that is similar to that type of experiment or demonstration. And there are some days when I just put it on in the car and say, listen and call it good. Um, we also have done it before where we did, like I said, the science at co-op where I read the lesson at home, but they did all the demonstrations at co-op with other kids. And that was like sublime. If I recommended anything, that would be like the best way to do it. Um, but there's so many different ways you can use this. The fourth thing that I love about Apology of Science is how it is written. It is written in a conversational way. It is not like the Charlie Brown teacher up there. Wah, 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 wah. Okay, so whether you're reading it or listening to it on audio, it is engaging. It is written like someone who is standing there with you who has a passion for the subject, but is also like your buddy, right? It's not just like a teacher like reciting information to you. It's not dry. It's written in short chunks with breaks with questions or hands-on activities to do in between so that you're not just sitting there listening, you're doing and you're answering questions, talking back and forth. And then the terms and things like that that you're going to need to know will be in bold print dispersed throughout. So you don't have to just like memorize a list of terms, you know, they're in there with the other reading. And then my fifth thing that I love about Apologia, and I bet you can already guess it, is that it is written in a biblical worldview. It is not preachy at all, but it is very much written from this is God's world and this is this beautiful science that we see in it. Yes, I'm saying beautiful science, even though I don't like studying science because I know that God is in science and it is beautiful, but you're not going to hear millions of years ago when dinosaurs, blah, 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 blah. Okay. You're only going to hear what they know. And when there's things that they are still studying that they don't know, they don't list them as fact. Right. And that's what I love about this. 
There is scripture throughout the entire book each and every year. It's all about God's design. It's all about creation. And I don't have to, you know, sit there and read and digest and think, okay, what do I need to like explain to my kids? I'm not one that like filters a ton of stuff out of my kids reading and schoolwork, but I talk with them, right? This, I don't have to do that because they've done a lot of it. Now, I will say that I do typically add on, I'll pause and I'll say, okay, well, let's take this further. Why do you think God made us like this? Why do you think this? Okay, but I don't have to in order to make the curriculum solid. So this is one curriculum that I have used and never even like been a little bit intrigued to try something else. Like I just love it that much that I'm like, I don't care if there's something different out there that might also be good. I love this and I'm sticking with it. And that's not just me being neurotic and afraid of change. It really is just that good. So I'm super excited to continue this Young Explorer series with my younger three. You know, I have a toddler who's going to be coming up there pretty soon, but I'm also excited to check out their uh, general science and physical science with my eighth and ninth grader as those kind of come up in the next few years. So if you have any questions about apology of science, leave them in the comments below and let me know what is your favorite elementary science curriculum. I thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Think ahead. Also, you do not have to come up to food. There's a fly. Ba ba da!